The Knicks are moving on to the second round of the playoffs, and I'm here to break it all down. All that and much more on the Knicks Digest. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Dario, from Knicks Digest. Before I move on to the Indiana Pacers, I just wanted to give my two cents on the first round of the playoff series against the Philadelphia 76ers since I was not able to. So first and foremost, Jalen Brunson is definitively becoming one of, if not the better Knicks of all time. I've been saying it since the beginning of this season with Jalen Brunson last season leading us past the first round, past Cleveland Cavaliers and winning in five games, ultimately losing in game six to the Miami Heat. But the way Jalen Brunson performed throughout this series, now there were some games where he was definitely overshadowed by a Tyrese Maxey. But overall, Jalen Brunson has put the team on his back and he's been able to show everybody why he deserves to be in the conversation for one of the better point guards, but not just point guards, one of the better players in the league. And this is a stat that came up to me after after the game six win against the Philadelphia. Jalen Brunson is the third player in NBA history with four consecutive playoff games of 35 points and five assists in a single postseason. Who are the other two players that he's joining? Well, he's joining, in most in most people's list, the second best player or the best player of all time, LeBron James, when he did that in the 2009 playoff series. And he's also joining who I consider the GOAT of all time, Michael Jordan, in the 1989 playoff run and also the 1990 playoff run. Whenever you're in company with LeBron and Michael Jordan in whatever list you're in, that that speaks volumes the way that his career is going his his development his basketball IQ just the way he handles himself on the court especially playing in the New York market future is extremely bright for Jalen Brunson hopefully Leon Rose and World Wide West moving forward hopefully we can add some pieces around him but that's another conversation for another day a first round series against the Philadelphia 76ers I would have liked to see them close it out in five at the Garden but hey a win is a win we move on to the next round and whichever way we get it I'm I'm happy and before I move on to the Indiana Pacers I wanted to give some flowers to Joel Embiid I know this is not a 76ers digest channel but Joel Embiid what he showed me this postseason was that he was definitely willing to put his body on the line literally for his team and his teammates playing on one leg throughout the whole playoff series you knew that he just wasn't the same he just wasn't moving right he wasn't able to explode off it he wasn't able to explode for jumping for blocking making his dreamlike moves he just wasn't the same now am i complaining no because we play who we play we play who's in front of us and Joel Embiid being injured in the postseason, another postseason, that's something that the 76ers are going to have to deal with. This seems like a recurring theme with Joel Embiid. Every postseason, he seems to be injured or he gets injured in the actual postseason. So I'm not sure what the future holds for Joel Embiid and the Philadelphia 76ers. Tyrese Maxey is one of the most brightest spots that the 76ers have in that team. He was giving us nightmares, especially in Game 5 when he dropped, I think it was 47, obviously sending it to overtime, and then the 76ers won eventually. But Cyrus Maxey, he made an all-star this season, but whatever the 76ers do, they need to keep him. Okay, so now moving on to the Indiana Pacers, who we're going to see in the second round. So first and foremost, I just wanted to bring up some numbers. I wanted to show you guys how we fared against them throughout the regular season. So this season, we were, we had three games against the Indiana Pacers, and we were uh, one and two. The first game, as you see here, was on December 30th. We lost by the score of 126 to 140. The second game, February 1st, we won that game 109 to 105. February 10th, which is the last game, we lost by a score of 111 to 125. And Jalen Brunson, who is our leader, of course, against the Indiana Pacers this season, take a look at these numbers right here, 35.7 points, 3.7 assists, and three rebounds in the three games against the Indiana Pacers. And now to break it down a little bit more specifically, in those three games, the first one, he had 28 points. Let's see, he was 9 of 22 from the field, which isn't great. 4 of 8 from three-point land, 50%, always love that. Six assists one rebound and the second game on February 1st he dropped a 40 burger ball and he was 15 of 30 from the field 50% love to see that one of six on three-point land not great 16% and then in the last game against the Indiana Pacers this season he dropped 39 points he was 14 of 25 from the field one of five from three-point land and he grabbed three rebounds with four assists 
Now, of course, everybody knows that in the playoffs, everything slows down. The game becomes more physical. The refs are going to let a lot of calls go. So my assumption is going in, going into this series against the Pacers, they're really going to try and get the ball out of Jalen Brunson's hands. They might, they might be throwing double teams at him. They might be blitzing him. But what I think separates Jalen Brunson from the rest of the point guards in the Eastern Conference and also the league is his basketball IQ. You see time and time again when he doesn't force it, when he has the other, when he has his other teammates to rely on, a Dante DiVincenzo, a Josh Hart, OG Anobi, who came up huge in that game six win against the 76ers. But one thing that I need to talk about, I need to talk about Pascal Siakam. So the Pacers, what they like to do, they really like to get up and down the court. They like to push it. They're young, they're athletic, and they're hungry. Makes all the sense in the world, especially Tyrese Halliburton. Tyrese Halliburton, 6'5", 6'6", lengthy. He likes to get up and down the court. But what Pascal Siakam brings to the Indiana Pacers is somebody who's able to slow the game down, specifically in a half-court game. In a half-court game, which is what the playoffs is all about, whatever the Indiana Pacers like to do in the regular season, that's going to be taken out. The Knicks are going to try. The Knicks are going to try and take away the running and gunning as much as they can. They're going to try and slow it down. They're going to try and grind it out. But the thing with that is, Pascal Siakam is perfect for that situation. He could he could score off the dribble. He has a mid range. He has a three pointer, especially in the post up. Pascal Siakam's post up game I think is very underrated, and I think that OG and Anobi is going to be put on Pascal Siakam because OG is our uh, perimeter defender, our best one. But the thing is, is that we're going to need offense from OG, so it might be a mix of different type of people that's going to be put on Pascal Siakam. And another thing is the rotations as far as players. So before Bogdanovich went out, we had three players. It was Bogdanovich, it was Deuce, and it was um, Mitchell Robinson. But now Bogdanovich is out. He's going to be out for the rest of the playoff series. And then we got Deuce McBride and Mitchell Robinson. Those are the only two players that are remaining that's going to be coming off the bench. And Mitchell Robinson is laboring up and down the court. So for the most part, Coach Tibbs is going to play the starting five probably around 40 to 48 minutes each game. And that's really, really dangerous territory because... The, the higher the minutes that the players play, injuries start piling up and things start happening that we can't really control. So that's something to keep an eye on. OG on Anobi's minutes, how many minutes he's on Pascal Siakam, his field goal makes and field goal attempts whenever OG and Anobi is guarding him. But I'm sure it's going to be a rotation of players that are going to be sticking Pascal Siakam. Josh Hart is going to be on him. Dante DiVincenzo is going to be on him. And Miles Turner. Miles Turner is a big going up against Isaiah Hartenstein and Mitchell Robinson. Now, where Miles Turner and Joel Embiid, where they're similar, they both can shoot the three ball, they both can put the ball on the floor, they both have a post-up game, but the thing is, Miles Turner is actually healthy. He's actually able to move around. So I think Isaiah Harnstein, Mitchell Robinson, it's going to be a little bit more difficult in order for in order for them to guard uh, Miles Turner. What we also need in this series, we need for Dante DiVincenzo to get off to a good start right away. And luckily for us in game six, he really popped off. He had a great game. He he was the one, if anything, that definitely set the tempo, that set the mood for the, whole, for the rest of the game. And if Dante DiVincenzo can get off to a really strong start, it's going to do wonders for us in the second round against the Indiana Pacers. Now, of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the homecoming of Obi Toppin. I'm coming home. Obi Toppin coming back to the garden. And I loved Obi Toppin when we had him, but unfortunately he was playing behind Julius Randle. So the minutes and on top of that, there were a lot of murmurs saying that he didn't really get along with Coach Tibbs, but he's in Indiana and I'm glad to see him thriving. I wish we'd have kept him. But that's something we got to keep an eye on as well. Obi Toppin playing against the Knicks, his old team. He's definitely going to have a little bit more motivation. But Obi Toppin and TJ McConnell coming off the bench, that might that might be the biggest thing in this series. TJ McConnell and Obi Toppin, I believe they combined for like 40, 45 points of the 60 bench points that, that they had against the Milwaukee Bucks in Game 6. They eliminated the Milwaukee Bucks. And TJ McConnell, I saw the highlights, was just looking like a young Isaiah Thomas. And compared to our bench, which is basically Deuce and Mitchell Robinson, that might be something that Coach Tibbs really needs to keep an eye on. Because from here on out, specifically OG and Anobi and Deuce McBride, they need to give us a specific amount of points. Deuce McBride coming off the bench, he needs to give us anywhere between 10 to 18 points a night. Now, that might be asking a lot of Deuce, but 
honestly, first of all, Coach Tibbs has all the confidence in the world in him. He's been playing him towards the end of the season. He's been playing him in the first round of the series, and Deuce has been coming up big, hitting tiny shots. So I believe Deuce can do it. 10 to 18 points. It doesn't have to be 18 points. It could be 14, 15, 16. And OG or Nobi, he has to be between 15 and 25 points. But the thing with OG is he's going to be put on the best offensive player on the opposite side. So that might exert, he might be exerting a lot of energy. So I think it's going to have to be between 15 and 20 points. Anywhere between 15 and 20 points, if we get that consistently from OG and Anobi, I think we're going to be in good shape. But as far as what we have to look out for, for the Indiana Pacers, we got to watch out for Miles Turner. We got to watch out for Pascal Siakam. We got to watch out for the Pacers bench. And I almost went an entire video without talking about the Pacers best player. Tyrese Halliburton. Now, what I'm more thinking about, I'm more thinking about who's guarding Jalen Brunson on the defensive end. Now, Jalen Brunson in the first round against the 76ers, he was going up against a campaign. He was going up against a Kyle Lowry, a Tyrese Maxey. All of those players are relatively around Jalen Brunson's height, around 6'2", 6'3". Tyrese Halliburton is 6'5", 6'6". He's lengthy, he's athletic, he likes to run up and down the court. And I'm just thinking along the lines of disrupting what Jalen Brunson likes to get into, interrupting and getting in his face, always being in his shirt. And Jalen Brunson hasn't seen anybody with this length in the playoffs so far. Now, I have all the confidence in the world that Jalen Brunson is going to be able to adjust. He's going to be able to adjust his game and work around Halliburton's length and athleticism and height. That's definitely something to keep an eye out for. As far as offensively, Jalen Brunson 100% is going to attack Halliburton. Now, there might be moments where Rick Carlisle might actually take Halliburton off Jalen Brunson to, to preserve his legs and also foul trouble. But whenever Jalen Brunson sees Halliburton in front of him, he needs to go right at him. He needs to attack him because the quicker we can get Halliburton in foul trouble, then that means that the rest of the team, they do have TJ McConnell coming off the bench, who's a great backup point guard, who's a great leader, who has shown in this playoffs that within a certain amount of minutes, he can definitely carry a team. But if Halliburton's in foul trouble, then I feel like that might discombobulate the rest of the team. So Brunson, obviously his first mentality is score. So he's going to be attacking whoever's guarding him. But if we can get Halliburton into foul trouble earlier, sooner than later, that's also going to help us out. Those are just a few of my thoughts, just freestyling right now, just thinking about the matchup between the Knicks and the Pacers. I'm going to be coming out with another video talking about it a little bit more in detail about what the Knicks need to do in order to advance. Leave it in the comments and let me know what you guys think about particular matchups between the Knicks and the Pacers. If you want to talk Brunson and Halliburton, Piat Pascal Siakam and OG, Mitchell Robinson going up against Miles Turner or Isaiah Hartenstein going up against Miles Turner, leave it in the comments and I'll make sure to get back to you. But until next time, guys, you know the drill, you know the vibes. Taj Gibson for president, Jalen Brunson for all the MVPs. The deuce is loose for co-MVP, and I'll check you on the next video. Peace.